Welcome to our Friday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Thank you. I would like to know what the word cross means in Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mark 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, that's a good question, because the Bible tells us to take up our cross. And in Luke, it says to take it up daily. And we know that we do not take up a literal cross. The Lord Jesus did bear a literal cross. He was nailed to a cross. And we follow his example And so God says, whosoever will come after me must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And really, when we analyze it and we look at all the Bible has to say about it, we find that Jesus's cross was ultimately doing the will of the Father. He came to do what the Father had sent him to do. And the period of his ministry was a part of that. But the Father's will was for Jesus to suffer a second time, yet without sin, and to demonstrate the things he had done from the foundation of the world, and to die, it says concerning Christ's death in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And then the Lord says, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And Jesus took up the cross without sin. He was spotless, sinless, the perfect Lamb of God. And so God commands us, be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Keep my commandments. Daily do my will. God commands us to do his will. And we can be sure whenever we do the will of God, what typically happens, what will be the result? There will be opposition there will be affliction, there is persecution for the word's sake. So Christ did the Father's will. He came to do it, and he accomplished it, and he went to the cross. We are called to walk in his steps. Today, part of the cross for a child of God depends on our situation. If we're a housewife, part of taking up our cross is to love our husband, to submit to him to never think of divorce. Even though there might be trouble in that marriage, we might even be married to an unsaved man. Or if we're a son or a daughter, taking up the cross is to honor our parents. And there's many other commands. If we're an employee, we may be taken advantage of to some degree at work, yet We do not get with all the other employees and speak badly about the bosses, but instead we work heartily as to the Lord. They're just little bits of God's direction for us, his commandments for us. And the more we do the will of God, the more we desire and are able to keep his commandments, there will typically be those that are contrary and opposition. He tells us what to do when Sunday the Lord's Day rolls around. It may be, for instance, that as someone seeks to do God's will concerning Sunday, well, guess what? Now the company we work for that never worked on the weekend now wants a 24-7 operation, and they want everyone in on Sunday. 
Well, see, this is just an example of the affliction that could come. And so now we're confronted with a situation. Do we perhaps suffer? It could even be financial suffering. It could be really a big problem, you know, if we were not able to work on Sunday and the company insists we do, and it could affect our livelihood and our bills and all kinds of things. Or do we give in? Do we say, well, I'll take up my cross in another area, and instead I'm going to compromise, and I'm going to do what the company wants me to do, and I'm going to play it safe and not risk my income and paying the bills, you see? And then it was a test for us, and it can show us our failure and our weakness and maybe even get us to wonder, am I really a child of God? You know, here is an opportunity to serve the Lord and to do His will, and I did not. That's just one of many examples. There's numerous ones, but there's no one answer for any one of us. It's the whole Bible as God brings it into our life and how it affects each one of us. Doing it God's way or doing it the world's way or our own way will determine whether we're taking up our cross or not. Actually, in Mark chapter 8, notice what it goes on to say in verse 35, for whosoever will save his life... Just think of the example I just gave. Someone's thinking, hey, I can't do it God's way. I'll lose my job. I can't pay my bills. They're thinking of saving themselves by not doing the will of God, by continuing to work. Well, all right. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And of course this relates to the end of the church age teaching. Now some are ashamed of that. Some want to return to the church, and they're not taking up their cross in that regard, and so forth. <laughs> 